When I was about 50, I felt the need of being needed. And although I had great successes with my operas, I, I got bored with that same audience that you find uh, at every festival, at every opera house. And I said, I, w I want to prove to, to myself and to the world that the place of an artist in society is not that of the entertainer, uh, of what uh, I love to use the phrase that uh, uh, Samuel Barber used to use, the, the after dinner mint. <laughs> but that we can really be part of the economics of a community. We can be as important uh, as any other citizen. And so I wanted to find a place that needed me and I wanted to see whether I could really help it with my music and with the help of other artists. So finally I, I, I came to visit Spoleto, which at the time was a forgotten town, practically on the verge of bankruptcy. And so I went to the mayor and said, uh, give me the, the two theaters you have which are abandoned more or less and let me try to help you. But what really pleased me very much was the fact that I found in, in many artists the same need that I had, that of being useful to, to society, not only be the entertainer, but actually the hero of, of the community. Well, we came to wish the maestro a happy birthday, and Maestro Minotti showing up with his grandchildren, looking at us in his lovely sleeping robe out, out of the window. There's a reason why the Spoleto Festival is as fascinating, as charming, after 38 years, and as fresh as it is, and it's because of this, this overview of this, of this master magician. And today, we're all very reliant on him for, for inspiration and leadership and craziness. And he has a sense of everything. In Spoleto, he doesn't miss a thing. The dress of a singer, what's going on, the atmosphere, what is concerns people. And he's curious about life like a child. I don't deny that I have a, a, a childish uh, uh, side to my nature. Perhaps because I, I, I love children, I play with children, I've written six operas for children and uh, I know uh, pretty much the, the psychology. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm Island the Night Visitors. Uh, if I were to rewrite it today, I would change it a little bit. The children enjoy it, but not all of it. The, the long quartet, you know, I've just seen a child, they get bored there because they, uh, they don't like ensemble, they want to hear what people are saying. Giancarlo always throws in something theatrical that you wouldn't expect. There's always some child or some, something a little off the beaten path in his operas that makes it very identifiable. Like we, we were laughing before, this is my box, this is my... I mean, <laughs> who else would come up with this is my box? I never travel without my box. I mean, how can you forget it? Generally, when, uh, when I, I teach the role to, uh, to Amar, the first uh, thing that I have to convince them is not to be a, a, a goody-goody boy. You know, Amar actually is, uh, he, he does lie. He probably also uh, steals and is very disobedient. So that uh, it, it makes it much, much more um, touching when he goes to defend his mother.
his operas are very, very intimate and very people-oriented. Uh, tells you about the heart and soul of, uh, of John Carlo Menotti. And uh, every little nuance in, in the opera, in the theatrical aspect of it, uh, brings out a facet of, of human mankind. <laughs> Music is really about emotion, feeling, and love, and it's, it's a very intense music always. And it creates those colors, those atmospheres. It's, it's really magical.